أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you all in today's online Quran class and can I request my colleague Toban Sai could you please recite this prayer for me? We can start the class. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanur rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Rabbi zidni ilma. Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Surah Taha, chapter 100, uh, verse 115. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah. <clears throat> By the grace of Allah, we have steadily progressing in our journey towards the learning of the Holy Quran with the correct pronunciation. And today's class, I have divided today's class into three parts. And just for, as a reminder, I just want to go through some of the etiquettes of the recitation of the Holy Quran and and we, sh we should all take care of when we start reciting the Holy Quran. Number one, whenever you start reciting the Holy Quran, you need to make sure that your mouth, your hand and your clothes are clean. And it is desirable to have a wudu evolution before you start reciting the Holy Quran. But if, if you, you cannot do the full wudu, but, but you need to make sure your hand and clothes are clean. Number two, when you start re reciting the Holy Quran, please make sure your head is covered with a suitable cap or dubatta or scarf as applicable to you. And then when you start reciting, always start with tawus and tasmiya. And then they recite the Holy Quran slowly and thoughtfully. You need to read every single letter in a word very clearly and give each letter its due right so as to clearly and fully pronounce. The recitation of the Holy Quran at dawn is specially acceptable to God. That's why we usually, after Fajr prayer, we, we have a tradition to re read the portion of the Holy Quran. Perform Sujudu Talawa where prescribed in the Holy Quran. You know, there are 15 places in the Holy Quran where on the side in the margin, we will see the word written as sajda, then you need to perform a sajda at uh, wherever that point comes. And during the recitation, reflect on what you are reading. For example, when you, read, you are reading about the punishment, we should repent. And when reading about the blessing of, the, of Allah, glorify, we need to glorify the God. And if there is any prayer, then we need to respond that as well. Um, uh, for example, in very common, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And when we say, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Lazina An-Amta Alayhim, Ghayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Waladhalim. Ihdina, Ihdina Sirat. We say, God, Oh, our God, guide us in the right path. Ihdina Sirata, guide us in the right path. The path of those on whom you have bestowed the blessings, Ananta blessings, and those have not incurred the displeasure and who have gone, who have not gone astray. So that's what we pray to God. And at the end, we say we we all have we all have observed that we all Listen that, I mean, because we all want our prayer to be fulfilled by the God. That's why we say, I mean, that's what uh, I meant. 
here. So whatever you are reading, then you need to reflect uh, at that during that. So we need to learn the, the next stage will be our translation or we can read with the translation. So we know that what we are reading in the Quran. The second part of today's class, that was a, bit, a little bit of reminder, I think. And the next, uh, why it is so important to learn the correct recitation of the Holy Quran. Can I request anybody who can give me a one reason why it is so important to learn the Quran with the correct recitation? Sometimes the meaning of the word can change in Arabic just by perhaps if we don't lengthen a um, letter. or So it's quite easy for the meaning of the Holy Quran, the Arabic, to, uh, to get changed. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Any other argument? Um, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Um, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the perfect book that has been given to the Holy Prophet so Asalaam, by, uh, by Allah. So, you know, if you're not reciting it correctly, then you're not showing due respect to Allah. Well done. Thank you very much, Andrew Sahib. Jazakumullah. Now, we, I, will, I, I have prepared a few slides to explore all these today. So, the first thing, as Andrew Sahib has mentioned, that this is the word of God. This is a perfect book given to Muslims. So we need to respect that and we need to learn it to read it correctly. And the second reason I can say that it is the commandment of the God. God has given a commandment in the Holy Quran and chapter 73, Surah Al-Muzammil, Allah Ta'ala says, وَرَتِّلِ Qurana tartila." and recite the Quran slowly and thoughtfully. You should know that what you are reading and you need to read it perfectly. And the third reason, it is the saying of the Holy Prophet that Laisa minna mallam yataghanna bil Quran. The one who does not recite the Holy Quran melodiously is not from among us. So if, if we want to be still a Muslim, then we need to fulfill the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we need to recite it perfectly and melodiously with the full heart and with the full conviction and, and beautifully reciting each word and letter according to the rules. And the Fourth point is that it is uh, the revelation of Prophet, uh, sorry, promised Messiah wasalam, that al where Allah Taala says al khairu kulluhu fil Quran. The Quran contains every kind of good in it. The Holy Quran is the book of gracious God. We all know that. And it leads to the path of knowledge and wisdom. If, if you know, the, for everyone, for, for like all laymen like us, for the people of Muslims, non-Muslims, scientists, the explorers, whatever, geologists, in Quran, they will find something for them. So it is the revelation to problem Islam that all kind of goods contain in Quran. So that's why we need to read Quran to get benefit out of the Quran. And then there is a motivation for us to learn the Holy Quran. <clears throat> there is a hadith, another hadith, where Azza said, Khairukum man ta'allam al Quran wa allamahu. The best among you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. So, so this hadith is in two parts. You know, the best amongst you is the one who learns the Quran. So today we all are here to learn the Quran. And once we can only teach it to others once we have learned it correctly. So if we, if we want to become the best, then we need to learn Quran correctly. That's, that's how we will uh, teach to others then. And there is a, another reason of reciting the Holy Quran is the big, big reward. 
of just reading the Holy Quran. There is a hadith where Azu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is narrated by Abdullah ibn Masood that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah, he will receive one good deed as ten good deeds like it. I do not say that Alif La Mim is one letter, but rather Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and the Mim is a letter. You know, we have seen this Haruf Mukhtaat at the beginning of Surah uh, Surah Al Baqarah. Look, this Alif La Mim. Just by reciting these three letters, Allah Taala uh, will give us. Uh, reward us 30 rewards so this is the another motivation that we should be reading the holy quran every day and uh, you know the once i started uh, counting the letters in the in surah al-fatiha this is a very small beautiful surah things opening chapter <coughs> and uh, uh, hazrat musih Islam has said that there are the four attributes described in this surah are the are the fundamental basic attributes of God. Rab, Rahim, Rahman, and Maliki Yomiti. <clears throat> so we need, there are, if we read just Surah Al-Fatiha, it, it, it contains around 150 letters. And it means whenever we recite the Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah Ta'ala will reward uh, uh, with uh, 100, 1500 rewards will give us 1,500 rewards to reciting the Holy Quran. Okay. Now, next I will explore, we are learning rules of the correct recitation. We have explored that, you know, that we have practiced so much that uh, this letter is a thick letter, this letter is a thin letter, this is the short vowels, this is the long vowels, we need to take care. Every time when we do practice, you know, the, I point out, no, please prolong this a little bit more. Don't prolong this letter. This is a thick letter. Please make a distinguish between thin and thin letter. There is an importance, as, as rightly mentioned one of our um, students, that uh, it can change the meanings of the whole verse. Now we will explore these correct. There are three basic rules of correct recitation. If you want to learn correct recitation of the Holy Quran, you need to take care of these three things. Number one, giving each letter its due right. You know that each word, verse, each is, com is a combination of different words and each word is a combination of different letters. We need to give each letter its due right. I will go in detail a little bit more in, in the next slide. But the next let point is the prolonging or shortening each letter according to the signs and strokes on, on that particular letter. And the third thing is pronouncing each letter according to their attributes. And, and uh, attributes mean I can say that sometimes uh, attributes like uh, a thick a thin letter these thick and thin concept can change the meaning as well so uh, there are certain letters which are kalkla letters there are certain we need to make kalkla there are certain letters which where we make we need to make a hunna sound these kind of attributes as well we need to take care and sometimes you know the like some attributes can change the meaning, but some attributes can affect the sound effects of the recitation of our Holy Quran. <laughs> now, giving each letter, when I say giving each letter is due right. Look, <clears throat> so many times we have mentioned that when we recite the Tawuz, the people start reciting the Auzu Billahi Shaitan Rajim, and we say, please look. This is not auzo. If we say auzo, so we are not giving due right of ein letter ein, which is there actually, and letter vow, we recite it as letter vow, which is not there. So we are not giving due right of ein here in this verse. So that's why we say it's not auzo. If it's auzo, then it should be this vow with skun. But it is a uzo. 
a is a hamza sound and the next is a ain sound a uzu billahi minash and the next people to some time it say auzu auzu you cannot prolong it because this is dhamma is only for one second so you need to take care of all these things not change any letter which is not there you recite it it is there or we, some time we say it it is not there and we recite it so that is the give each letter its due right next as rightly mentioned earlier in the class sometimes if we if sometimes we don't take care what stroke a sign on the letter is and quickly recite it it can change entirely change the meaning of the verse for example again example is from surah al fatiha sirat al ladina an amta alaihim this an amta is basically we we in our prayer we say allah taala you bless it. but if unconsciously or ignorantly we say an amtu so the whole concept of this verse is changed anamtu mean i blessed so from you blessed oh my god you blessed and nauz billah we will be saying i blessed which is totally wrong so that's why we need to take extra care to see which sign or stroke on a letter and we need to pronounce it is accordingly the next is a shortening or prolonging each letter according to the sign or stroke on it this is again a verse taken from surah al baqara where allah taala says zalikal kitab la raib this la la is lam with huruful madda that means it need it, it needs to be prolonged for 2 second but if we are in hurry we don't take, if we don't take care of all these rules and we say zalikal kitab la raiba like this nauzubilla la raiba prolonging just prolonging rather than 2 second we prolong it for 1 second the whole meaning of the verse will change totally opposite this is a perfect book there is no doubt in it and nauzubilla not prolonging this la mean which is for not so it will be surely there is a there is a doubt in it this is a perfect book zalikal kitabu la raiba means there is no doubt in it or la raiba surely there is a doubt it nauzubillah so we need to take extra care of these short uh, long vowels and short vowels uh, accordingly and recite, we need to recite accordingly and then it comes to the attributes of the words like i we were saying that thick some letters are thick some letters are thin there are uh, total 29 letters out of 29 seven letters are always pronounced with thick sound 19 letters are always pronounced with thin sound and three letters are conditionally thick and thin and we have said so many times and today inshallah ta'ala i will cover those three letters as well when they are thick and when they are thin so that's the look in surah al ikhlas this kaf is a thick sound kul kul but if we ignorantly say kul not kul thick sound that will change the meaning of the verse as well and in original form kul with the thick sound say say he is allah the one this kul mean say and this kul is eat and you cannot say eat he is allah the one the meanings is totally changed for that verse so that's why it is so important if letter is a thick we need to pronounce it as a thick sound if letter is a thin we need to prolong uh, pronounce it as a thin sound uh, now we have learned that the thick uh, you know as i mentioned that uh, there are 9 29 letters and 19 are always thin sound 
seven are thick and three are conditioned. That, that's what we have revised so many times. And these are all the thick sound letters. But these three letters, we always say they are conditionally thick sound. So that's why we, I will revise these today. And then inshallah, we will do some practice as well. I have chosen uh, Surat al Kosar today. So number one, permanently thick and heavy sound letters. Look, this is Ha, is first letter, which is pronounced thick sound. And we say, Khaledina, Ha, that Ha, Khaledina. Holika, holy ko. This ko and this ko a ko. All these are pronounced thick sound. Similarly, sod, dod, to, all these words are here. And because we have done so many times, I will go, but I, I want to give more emphasis on the letter alif, lam, and ra today. We, we, we learn that alif is a conditionally thick letter. What are the conditions? Alif is always, I said, uh, uh, alif hasn't got own sound, but it always depends on the letters before or stroke or sign. When any stroke or sign on letter alif, then it becomes a hamza sound or a thick or thin sound is depends on the what is before the letter alif. So in, in this word, alif, what is the letter ta is before alif. So this elongation alif aruful madda will be prolonged with the thick sound all along. Ta. And here <clears throat> alif is preceded with letter ya, which is a thin sound letter. Here is a letter meme, which is a thin sound letter. So in both cases, we say e ya ka. We will not say e yo ka. E ya ka. All these thin sound letters. So this prolongation of thin sound all along for two seconds. Yeah. There is a meme sound for two seconds. So alif is depending on the preceding letter. If it's a thick letter, the alif will have a thick sound letter. If it's a thin sound letter, then it will have a thin sound letter. Very simple, straightforward. And the letter Ra, <clears throat> this we need to learn. The letter Ra, if carries Fatha or Dhamma, or Fatha Ten or Dhamma Ten, Dhamma Ten, two, two, two Dhamma or Fatha Ten, two Fatha, then it will be pronounced with a thick sound, Ra. Si Ra to. Ra is a thick sound because this carries fata on the top. This ru, kafa ru is a thick sound because ra is carrying a dhamma sound. We say kasiran. Ra, this thick sound because fata ten. This mustakarun, thick sound of ra because it's a dhamma ten. So fata, fata ten, dhamma, dhamma ten, ra is always with the thick sound. Whereas if ra is carrying kasra or kasra ten, then it will be a thick sound. We will say ab sorry him. Ab sorry him. This re is a thick sound. Oh, sorry, thin sound then. Is similarly here, kafirim. Behi, rim, behi, re, this re, rim, ra will be a thin sound. But you can, a question can be raised, what will happen if there is a, a school sign on ra? Then in that case, similarly, like here, Aleph, you will go back and look at the preceding letter. If the preceding letter has got a fatha, then the ya with school will be a thick sound. But if preceding letter has got a kasra, then the ra with skun will be a thin sound. I think, I hope that will be a clear now. Fata, fata ten, or dhamma, dhamma ten, ra will be thick sound. Kasra or kasra ten, 
ra will be thin sound and for sukun sakin ra we need to look at the preceding letter if it's a fata or dhamma then it will be a thick or if it's a kasra then it will be a thin letter or light sound letter and then lam shaddad we need to take care lam shaddad harden lam in the divine name name of allah is called lam is called lamul jalala if in word allah the preceding letter has got a fata or dhamma then the lam in allah will be pronounced with the thick sound and if lam in allah, word allah is preceded with a kasra then the lam in allah will be pronounced with a thin sound the examples are here look this is the first in allah because this lam in allah lam al jalala with the heavy sound because of this noon will fatha that's why we need to pronounce this lam with the thick sound here hadudullahi this lam is thick because this preceding vowel letter is with the dhamma sign similarly here qalullahum this lullahum thick sound because of this last vowel letter is with dhamma and here in this example we'll see is we say bismillahi bismillahi we we, we will not say bismillahi we will not make a thick sound here because in this preceding letter vowel letter is mim with kasra similarly we'll say alhamdulillahi lillahi we will not say lillahi because this lam has got kasra similarly afillahi a fillahi no thick sound fillahi thin sound because of this has got kasra so is there any and all other lam apart from in word allah always always thin sound like allazi we will not say allazi that will be wrong allazi illa udallil muttaqi this all lam will be pronounced as a thin sound if you have any question or we will do some this practice now I, I think everything is clear now i hope so so today is a very simple surah i want to you all apply rules because this is a simple surah apply all rules apart from this madda we we haven't covered this one yet but this this small mud you need to prolong 3 to 5 second this is called small mud so otherwise all we have covered all rules in this shura so i hope everyone will be, will be able to decide correctly so toban sahib please one by one request uh, our students so they can decide uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah um sofi normally you want to open the floor you want to have a go first assalamu alaikum sofia sahiba assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum ya al habibat aud ji please apply all rules we have learned everything please make sure where is small uh, short vowel short vowel where are long vowels where is huruf uh, lean where is huruf madda all apply yeah please a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim inna a'tayna fil qawthar ta'ina this ta is a thick sound and a ruf lean as well ta'i two second na is two second as well inna 
Aina kal kautar. Kal kautar. Kaf is thick sound. Kal kautar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shaniyaka huwal abtar. Well done. Very nice reading. Jazakumullah. Next one, please. Um, Anik Ahmed Siddiq, you want to have a look? Assalamualaikum. Oh, Asaf Hassan. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum Assalam. Um, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna A'udhu Taina kal kausar Fasalili rabbika vanhar Inna shaniya ka huval abdar Jazakumullah And just uh, Can you please read this one? These, these two words as well? Khali deen Sorry, Holy Dina Kulika. This one, Tolibu Bacha. This one, Holaka Utilat. Yeah, okay, okay, and this one. Sirota. Uh, yeah, ka next one. Kafaru. Kasiron. Mus Mustakarun. Yeah. Chilam, thank you very much. Next one. <coughs> next one, please. Sonic Montula. Um... The Azan, you want to have a go? Or rather, Kesem or iPhone 3? Whoever want, or Nusrat Adam Saiba, whoever want to unmute, please. Assalamualaikum, Nusrat Adam Saiba. Wa alaikum Inna <laughs> Yeah, two things. Now it's not le le rabbi fasalli li rabbika and and who will you cannot prolong lam with scone will not be prolonged for one more than one second. Yeah, who will abutar? Who will abutar? Okay. iPhone. Do you want to unmute or G seven zero two four? Sorry, Kumaram Tulahi Barakat. Assalamualaikum, G7024, or Lukman. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam. A'udhu billahi No, no, no. That's what we have mentioned, you know. Look, I mentioned this. A'udhu is like this. Yeah? Yeah. Can, can you see? And what is yes. this? A'udhu. Yes, well done. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أعطينا كل كوسر أعطينا أين أعطينا أعطينا إذا أتى أعطينا كل كوسر Full verse again, please. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar fasallili rabbika wanhar 
No, one heart. It's one second only. One heart. Okay. Fasalli li rabbika one heart. Inna shani akahu al abdar. Yeah, there's a special rule here which is called uh, Noon Sakin and Tanween rules. Any Noon Sakin or Tanween followed by a Haruful Halkia, where Ha is one of the Haruful Halkia, then we cannot prolong it for more than one second. We haven't learned this rule, but I want to make sure you're re reading correctly. Yes? Okay. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum, Muzma or Tahir Sahib, you want to have a go? Tahir is iPhone or Tahir Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Can you please make sure that background noise is. Can you please switch off the TV behind? Yes, it's been done. Speak it. Next one. Please read. No. rajim. Just one second. Let me know what this sign on the top of Lam of Lamul Jalala. Lamul Jalala, where Lam is in word Allah. This lamb has got vertical fatha. Yes? Yes. Can you see? And how long we we should be pronouncing this one? Two seconds. Yes, well done. Now read again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Heem. Heem. This is Haruful Madda. Ha, you know, we learned that if Ya with Skun proceeded with Kasra, a, a, a letter with Kasra, then we need to prolong it. Yeah? Yes. In. Uh, a you know, this na it should be two seconds here, and this sha is two seconds as, as well. Please read the last line again. In well done. Next one, please. Assalamu alaikum, brother Andrew. Do you want to have a go? Assalamu alaikum, brother Andrew Sahib. Assalamu alaikum. You know, before Andrew Sahib starts, uh, just one second. I need to mention another hadith that uh, where Azur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if uh, you, uh, you know, that I mentioned that if when you read the Holy Quran, you get a reward for that. Every letter you read, you get a reward. But if you read with difficulty then you get a double reward so don't hesitate always come to read you will get a double reward if you are facing a difficulty to read Zakumullah, please and mr andrew a'uzubillahi is a little bit longer in now uh, what do you want me to start my then yeah, in Binna. Okay. Inna. Yeah. Inna. Ah. Te. Na. Kal. Ku. Sha. Kausa. Fa. Sali. 
li rabbi ka dhan ha. Just one second. This lam has got kasra. Only one second. Rabbi is only one second. Yeah. So salili rabbi ka one ha. Look, just read with me. Fasalli. Rabbi. Fasalli. Dasalli. Fasalli. Fa. Fa. Fasalli. Li Rabbi ka. Fa. Li Rabbi ka. Fasalli. Li Rabbi ka. One ha. Rabbi ka. Van ha. Yes. Well done. Next. Fa sali le rabbi ka van ha. Yes. Well done. Next. This one. Inna ni ta. Inna. Chika. Well done. Next. It's, it's right. Inna. Yeah. Shani aka inna shani aka. I think we we'll, have we'll lost the connection. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, Mr. Andrew, are you still there? Oh, hello. Yes, I'm still here. Sorry, I thought I would. Uh, I you'd finish with me. <laughs> no, no. Just read this one again. Inna. Inna, inna, sha, inna, sha, ni, a, ka, hu, val, ab, ta, tar. Well done, well done. You you are reading now. You know the multiple words at the same time. Quite good. Well done. And joining together nicely. Not, not. Well done. Learning quite good now. Thank you very much. Next one, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Um, Faiz Abdurrahman or Farida, I'm sure you must be in the background. Faiz Abdurrahman or Farida, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillahi <laughs> Fasolili Robbi Kawan in a shiny aka uwal abta. Huwal, who not uwal, who hasan, huwal abta. Again, this light last verse in a shiny aka. Who will up to? Okay, and thank you very much. Next one, please. So, G7027 or iPhone 3. Uh, I think we have only a few. Uh, or brother Kes, Kemo Kasam Sahib. If you want to have a go, Salikum, brother Kemo. Assalamu alaikum. A'uzu billahi mina shaytani rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Inna a'ina qal kawsar Fasalli li rabbi kawanhar Fasalli li rabbi Li, don't prolong this Fasalli Fasalli Fasali. This is Tashdeed, but only one. next Fasalli Li Rabbika. Fasalli Li Rabbika Wanhar Inna Sani Aka Huwal Aka. Well done. Shani Aka. Sha. Sheen. Sound, yeah? Yeah. Your reading is quite improved now. Well done. Assalamu alaikum. Uzma Ijazi. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Uzma 
careful reading is Akmullah. Well done. Next one. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. <clears throat> this is Haruf al -Lain. We have learned that Ya and Ba two Haruf al -Lain. When it comes with Skun sign and the preceding letter has got Fata. Then we say shai, wow, yau. So shai to. Okay. Auzu billahi mina shaito nirajim. Bismillahi rahma nirahim. Inna a'tayna kal kawsar. A'tayna. Two seconds. In, okay. Inna Atena Kal Kosar. no second sound of Ra, just Tar. Yes. Ab, okay. ab is a rufal kalkala. Ab, okay. tar. Ab, ab, tar. Well done. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah. Salikum Farida Bakari. Salikum Farida. Do you want to have a go? You can unmute yourself. Farida Sahiba. Salikum Rukhullah. She's not here. Ach. Um, Salikum. Uh, any other volunteer, please? You can unmute yourself. We still have. Assalamu alaikum. Any other volunteer who hasn't read and you want to have a go, it is Baraka. You please, you can read. No, no one is left. No, we almost all of them. Okay, yeah, yes, go ahead. This, this. Sorry. sorry, sorry, go on. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Inna a'tayna kal qawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shan yakahu wal abtar. Yeah, well done. Zagullah, this Fasalli Tajdeed Fasalli Li Rabbi Kawan Har. Yeah, there's a one. This, this, you know, here, this Kasra is uh, basically at the gym. Yeah, there's a, I think it's a typing error. It's a, it's a little bit further down. It should be under gym. Yes, yeah? I'm just want to make sure it's a typo. So, gym is um, for the Kasra, is, should be under gym. Yeah. Well done, Jazakumullah. Next one, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Auzu billahi min ash-shayt wa nirrajim. No, no. Did, did, did you attend class uh, right from the beginning or you? No, I joined recently. Recently, okay. You know, whatever, what is this? Just read this. Auzu. And now read this. What is the difference between this and this? Can you recognize anything different? Uh, Au. Yes. Mm. You see, when you read Auzu, this you are reading this one, which is wrong. It should be two separate sounds. A, U. Yeah. A is a Hamza sound. Next is Ain sound. Okay. 
A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. No twa, I cannot see any vow after ta. Is there any ta vow here? No. Okay, then read again, please. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Well done. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'tayna. Long, two, th- at least three, four, five seconds. Inna. Inna. Yes. A'tayna kal kawsar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. In a shani aka hua abdar. Is there any alif after ka? Is is only one second. You see, look, this is fatha, only one second. Read again. In a shani a ni aka hua abdar. In a shani aka ka, only one second. Okay. In a shani aka hua abdur. Who will abdur? Who will abdur? All right. Yeah. Next one, please. Uh, I think Aman will most everybody has read, I think. Uh, if there is anyone left for some reason, please you can unmute yourself. Sorry. Okay. Now, uh, if, if there is a time, I, I will request anyone who is going quite confident they can apply all the rules in Surah Al-Fatiha. So the last, then otherwise I will request uh, to Ban Sahib to explain all the rules in Surah Fatiha and then let, let us how to, we can read it properly. To Ban Sahib, you, yes, do you want to explain? Yes, I can. Yes, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, alaikum um, like as Aman Sahib just mentioned, I will go uh, very briefly. Um, Bismillah here again it's not Allah, it's a simple lamb. Bismillah because Mim uh, has got a kasra. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Again, there is a um, roof mother there. Here, Alhamdu, Alhamdu, that is wrong. So Alhamdu, just one second. Alhamdu. Lillahi again, Lillahi is not a thick, it's a thin. Alhamdulillahi, it's a thin. Lillahi, Rabbil Alameen. There's a vertical fatha on Ayn, uh, which is again two seconds, and um, Ar Meen, which is um, again here we have a huruf madda here because Meen was a kasra. Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki um, Again the Amim There is a vertical fatha with two seconds Maliki Yawmi Yawmi This is um, um, uh, It's a uh, Khruf Lain Maliki Yawme uh, in some of the African continent, I know being an African, and some from the Asian, we hear most of the time, Malike Yaumed, Yaumedin, Yaumedin, uh, Yaumi, Yaumidin. And as soon as you see Tashjid, Tashjid is at the front, here you cannot um, uh, pause at any point to prolong that. Maliki, two seconds, Mim, Maliki Yaumidin. Here, our man Saba has just uh, explained in the beginning, Iyya, we can't say Iyok. No. Iyya is a um, uh, Ya with a uh, 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 alif, ma- alif Madda. So again, Iyya, simple thing. Na'budu. Na'budu, um, because many of reciters, we normally confuse here, Dal with a Wow. This Wow is a... Uh, with the fatha is not uh, addition to dal behind it. Na budu, that is a mistake. Na budu, na budu, one second, dal with a, with a dhamma. Wa iya kanasta, wa iya kanasta'in. 
Again, in most cases, you may hear when we get a rhythm of recitation, you hear many people, wa iya kanasta in nasta in garate. That's a mistake because the ta haya again has got fatha one second and khuruf al madda which is ain with a kasabe nasta in. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين صراط سيرة صراط الذين را um one sub did mention را is a thick because has got um فتح has got a فتح and this we have here two seconds again because there's an alif there صراط الذين here and I'm to, again, and I'm to, Aman, uh, clearly explained when you mention an am to, the meaning will change, but also it's important to remember, and I'm to, because we know that we are in a rhythm of recitation. Now, and I'm to, alayhim, alayhim, gayril magdubi, alayhim, ayn bi ayn, alayhim, waradhalim. Hope that can help. If I can take one more reciter. Please. Please. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdin As-Sirat إحدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. زاك ملا، very very well recitation. زاك ملا، careful recitation. Uh, now it's uh, nine o'clock, inshallah ta'ala. We will start uh, uh, more surahs now in our practice and uh, while learning the new rules as well. Now it's nine o'clock. We will finish our class with the prayer and I would request any class student who can come forward to read this prayer for me. Assalamualaikum. As this time uh, is gone, Aman Sab, I can read. Yeah, so okay. okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma rahmani bil Quran al Azim. O oh Allah, have mercy on me through the Quran, the Great. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah Rabban Sahib, we finish our class now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.